Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting functional equation. We're actually going to evaluate it at a point. So we're given a function such that f of x multiplied by f of f of x equals 1. And we are also given that f of 1000 is equal to 999. Now this is a continuous function and we're going to evaluate f of 500. So our goal is to find f of 500 based on the information given. So before we get into the actual solution, we're going to go ahead and explore a couple different things. First of all, are we able to find what f looks like? What could f be, right? Is it a rational function? Is it radical? Is it exponential? Does this function exist? And if it does, what kind of function are we talking about? So let's go ahead and try to isolate f of f of x from here, which is probably going to give us a better view. So from here, we can write f of f of x as 1 over f of x. Of course, you don't want f of x to be 0, and that's not allowed because if f of x is 0 at any point, then this equation will be false because you can't multiply 0 by a number to get 1. I mean, we're talking about real numbers, of course, right? At least in this field, that's not going to work. So what do we do? Well, we can kind of speculate. We can say, okay, what if f is a power function? Can f be something like x to the power alpha, right? Where alpha is any real number. It can even be a complex number. Because if you think about a problem like this, which we could probably uh, tackle later, uh, which, by the way, let me check. That's our function. Okay. I think what I meant is like something like f inverse is 1 over f of x. Yep. So whenever you're looking at a function like this, we could probably try uh, some complex exponents. But anyways, that's a different story. We'll talk about that later. And maybe we talked about it uh, before. But if f of x is something like this, and then do you think it's going to satisfy this equation? Of course, uh, we're given this point. So our equation also needs to satisfy this, which means that we probably need a little bit more numbers, like maybe something like alpha times x to the power beta seems more appropriate because we do need more parameters to satisfy both conditions. So from this equation, we do know that f of f of x is just going to be found by replacing x with f which is f of alpha times x to the power beta. And if you apply f to this, you're going to be getting what? f takes the input, multi uh, raises it to the power beta. So it's gonna, you're going to take this as an input, raise it to the power beta, and multiply by alpha. Of course, we do that alpha first, but I just wanted to tell you how this works. So if you compose it with itself, you're going to get this. This is f of f of x. And of course, we want this to be 1 over f of x, which is 1 over alpha times x to the power beta. So do we get a solution from here? Let's go ahead and find out. First of all, we get alpha times alpha, alpha squared, but we have to the power beta. So it's going to be like this. Alpha to the power beta times x to the power beta to the power beta. That's going to be beta squared. And this can be written as 1 over alpha times x to the power negative beta. Now, it's important to write x um, to the power of something because we're going to compare the left-hand side and the right-hand side. This is alpha to the power 1, so we're going to multiply uh, these two things by adding the exponents. Alpha to the power 1 plus beta is equal to 1 over alpha, which we can write as alpha to the power negative 1. So from here, we could probably say that 1 plus beta is negative 1, which means beta is negative 2. Okay, let's go ahead and put that aside. Can we get other solutions from here, like maybe alpha can be 1, because if alpha is 1, and then any power is going to give you the same thing, so that could work, um, be, regardless of beta. Or can alpha be like something like 0, or maybe even negative 1, right? For example, if alpha is negative 1, then we're going to get negative 1 to the power 1 plus beta is negative 1 to the power negative 1. But of course, this requires that alpha is either even or odd, I think, because this is going to give us a negative 1, and 1 plus beta needs to be odd, which means beta needs to be even. But is this going to work for all alphas that are negative? See, these are all good questions, something to think about. But these seem to be good solutions. But let's go ahead and proceed with that. So we know that beta is negative 2, but that's not the only condition we have. 
We also need to make sure that this is satisfied, right? And that means uh, x to the power beta squared is x to the power negative beta, which means beta squared is a negative beta, which means, what does this mean? Okay, that's a good question. Beta squared plus beta, I got stumped by this question. Beta parentheses beta plus one equals zero. From here we get beta equals zero or beta equals negative one, right? Okay, great. So unfortunately they did not work with this. So we don't really get any solutions from here, unfortunately, because they don't seem to agree, right? Okay, what else do we have? Uh, well, we could kind of proceed with alpha equals negative one maybe, and then beta can be uh, odd, right? Would this work, for example, uh, negative one comma one might work. Let's give it a try. It's worth exploring. So if this is the case, then f of x can be written as alpha times x to the power beta. And since beta is any odd number, why don't I just use a three, right? And now if we do f of f of x, that's going to give us, let's see, uh, negative one times x to the third power, negative one times negative one times x to the third power, and that's going to be to the third power. Make sense? This will replace x, which is f of x. So from here, we're gonna get negative one times negative one times x to the power nine. And that is same thing as x to the ninth. But this is not the same as one over f of x because one over f of x is just gonna be negative one over x cubed. Unfortunately, these two powers are not equal. So alpha equals negative one and beta is any odd number did probably not work, unless you wanna use something else, something more generic like two n minus one. Let's try that. Alpha equals negative one, beta equals two n minus one. So this means f of x is equal to negative one times x to the power two n minus one, f of f of x is just gonna be f of negative one times x to the power two n minus one, which is gonna be negative one times, negative one times x to the power two n minus one to the power two n minus one, and then from here we get negative one times negative one to the power two n minus one, and then x to the power two n minus one squared. That's f of f of x. And then of course, uh, negative one to raise to an odd power is negative one, negative one times negative one is one. So this is just completely garbage. I mean, it's just one. And then we go with this, and now we want this to be one over f of x, which should be what? Uh, the reciprocal, which is negative one over x to the power two n minus one. And if you set that equal to x to the power two n minus one squared, from here we might get a good solution. Let's go ahead and multiply these two things. That gives us x to the power two n minus one to the third power equals negative one, which possibly means that x can be negative one because two n minus one to the third is also an odd number. So x equals negative one. Wait a minute. Wait, what is that supposed to mean? Are we solving for x? No, really. So, but basically, is this gonna be true for all x values? No, because in order for this to work, x probably needs to be negative one. Again, we're kind of running into a wall here, so let's go ahead and try a different approach. I'm not gonna go through all the possibilities um, because there's you know infinitely many. Why don't we just try to find f of 500 directly, okay, without finding f of x, which is, uh, you know, uh, kind of like a tricky way to do it, but that's sometimes uh, necessary. Okay, so the eraser didn't erase for some reason. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this now. So since I know that f of 1000 is given, how could I use that to find f of 500? That's what I was trying to find, right? So we're going to use a very important theorem. First of all, suppose uh, we can write this relationship f of f of x one more time as 1 over f of x. And I basically want to replace x with 1,000 first, of course, because we know f of 1,000. That gives us f of f of 1,000 equals 1 over f of 1,000. Now, we do know that f of 1,000 is 999. So this is equal to 999, and this is equal to 999. You know what that means? It means f of 999 is equal to 1 over 999. This is really good because we now have two points on this graph function, and I already told you that f is continuous, right? So why does that matter? Because in order for us to be able to use that very special theorem, we do need that f is continuous on a closed interval. But right now, let's look at what we have. We know that f of 1000 
is f of 1000 is 999 and f of 999 is 1 over 9999. So let's go ahead and try to graph a function that kind of reflects this. For example, uh, we're going to have like, and this is not drawn to scale by any means, but suppose this is 999 and this is 1000. Okay, again, it's not drawn to scale, so don't worry about it. But f of 999 is very small value, by the way, it's something like this. And f of 1000 is huge, something like this, right? This is 1 over 999, and this is 999. Now, our graph is going to be continuous, and it's going to go whatever way is going to go through these, right? And remember, we're looking for f of 500. So here's the thing. The intermediate value theorem tells us that if you just pick a value between 999 and 100, such as, suppose A is between 999 and 1000, we know that f of a is going to hit somewhere in the middle, and I want that to be 500. So basically, the th theorem says that if you have a y value like 500, it needs to have a corresponding a value between uh, 999 and 1000. The intermediate value theorem tells us that, that a exists. Okay, let's find out what that uh, gives us. Now, I'm going to go ahead and apply f on both sides. So now f of f of a is just going to be f of 500. And there's a good reason behind this because I'm trying to find f of 500 and it only makes sense if I apply f on both sides. But wait a minute. We do know that f of f of x is always 1 over f of x. So f of f of a is 1 over f of a. And that is equal to f of 500, right? But f of a is 500. So 1 over f of a is 1 over 500. Uh-oh. This is interesting. This means that f of 500 is 1 over 500, which is what we're looking for. So that's the answer. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in the other video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.